Aquarium plants are super beneficial when it comes to your fish tanks. They do a few things. They will provide cover for fish, allowing, you know, small, small fry, uh, certain fish that are shy to hide. It makes them feel more safe. It makes the tanks look more aesthetic. And it also has a great benefit of improving your water quality by removing nitrates and phosphates from the water column because the plants will use those as fertilizers. Now, in many tanks, that's very easy, but in some tanks, if you have fish that are destructive or diggers and things like that, it can be very challenging having live plants. So today, I'm gonna to give you a few tricks and tips on how to have live plants with some of your more destructive or digging fish. Before we jump into the topic, I do want to pause and thank all of you for watching this video. It does very much help when you watch the video, when you give it a thumbs up. So please do that if you have not done so already. Also, as you can tell, I love my Into the AM t-shirts and I want to thank Into the AM for sponsoring this video. Into the AM is a team of artists and creators that formed an apparel company to share a common vision of developing premium apparel that elevates self-expression while focusing on comfort by using the highest quality materials and eco-friendly inks. Into the AM has dozens of cool designs to choose from, covering many categories including t-shirts and tank tops, hoodies and jackets, hats, and even joggers and shorts. Use the link and discount code below to shop at Into the AM and find your clothing piece to express what drives you. All right, so let's talk about how you can have aquarium plants with fish that are destructive. Now, down here in this room, I have plants in almost every tank. Now, there's a couple of exceptions with like tanks that are brackish water, mixture of salt water and fresh water. I've got a couple of those that don't have live plants in them. Some that do, like my uh, Java fern growing very well, I should say, in my uh, figure eight puffer brackish tank. I've got mangroves growing out of others, but I've got live plants in pretty much all of my aquariums. But in some tanks, it's almost impossible or it's very challenging, like my Oscars as an example, or my African cichlids, which I've talked about before. It can be very challenging having live plants with some of those. So let's get into the list. Now, first off, there is something that is very, very easy to use that pretty much makes having a live plant in a lot of these aquariums very easily. And that is by using an easy planter. The box is empty because I have a bunch of them upstairs, a couple of them upstairs, and I'm using them in one of my aquariums. So obviously we'll show you the B-roll, but I love having them in that tank because I have geophagus in that aquarium. So geophagus are a South American cichlid that will basically um, sift substrate through their mouths, extracting food and spitting out the substrate. So in that tank, because it used to be a cichlid tank, I've got like aragonite and gravel in there and the fish are in there digging all the time and I would not be able to have live plants in there without the easy planter. So the easy planter is just that, it's a planter that happens to look like a rock so it matches my decor perfectly and it allows me to have live plants in there because they cannot dig the plant out of the rock. So um, an easy planter is a great way of having live plants in an aquarium that has any kind of digging fish or more destructive fish. Now a pro tip on both the easy planter and some of these other things I'm going to talk about is to establish the plants ahead of time when possible. So the more time that you have between you first putting those plants in your aquarium and you finally putting in those fish, the better chance you have of those plants surviving and thriving. So if you are gonna have an African cichlid tank with plants and you are gonna do some of these, maybe set up the plants right away and maybe wait a month or so before you add the fish so the plants have a chance to attach to the rocks or the wood or get their roots running. Um, same thing, if you, even if you're using an easy planter, um, if you kind of get it set up beforehand, it does make things go a little bit smoother. The next tip is to use a plant that basically attaches to something through their rhizome. Now the rhizome is like that hard stem trunk looking part of the plant. So think about things like Java fern, Anubias, uh, Bulbitis, things that have, uh, they don't have like roots that go into substrate. They're, bas they're basically water column feeders. So if you do have a fish that digs and they're digging in the substrate, like the geophagus that I, that I referred to, or maybe some other type of cichlid that likes to dig in the sand or make little nests, if you have java fern or anubias or bulbitis or other types of ferns and harder, harder plants uh, attached to wood and rocks and decorations, 
they can dig all they want, but they're not going to bother what's attached to that decoration or that rock. They're pretty much going to leave it alone. And a lot of those plants that I described, they don't like to eat anyway. So if you do have some type of herbivore fish or omnivore fish that will eat plants, um, they usually leave those ones alone because they don't taste good or they're too tough. So having those will also allow you to have the look of the aquarium plants, get the benefit of them feeding in the water column, but still allowing you to have fish that dig. Next on the list is to have floating plants. Now floating plants obviously are floating, so you don't have to worry about any digging. So I've actually had great success with floating plants with the uh, fish that uh, like to dig because they can dig again all they want. They can move piles of shells and, and you know sand around and all the floating plants are left undisturbed. They won't bother them. So as long as you don't have a fish that will eat the floating plants, you should be fine. Now, in some cases like my Mbuna that you see behind me here, you do see floating plants in there and people wonder, how do you have floating plants in your Mbuna tank? Well, that's hornwort and they don't like to eat hornwort. And there are other floating plants that you could also try that they might not like to eat. Um, I like to use hornwort because I found it to be quite hardy, fast growing, and my Mbuna don't eat it. So that's how I'm able to have uh, floating plants or having plants in certain aquariums where I do have fish that are destructive, where I do have fish that might like to eat plants, I'll just pick a plant that they won't eat and that floats and I don't have to worry about attaching it to a rock or anything. It's just in there doing its job. It looks good and um, it's basically hassle-free. The next one on the list is to use plants that shoot runners through the substrate and grow new plants. Now, there are a lot of different plants that do this, but there are some plants that do this that are quite hardy and they do it rather quickly like uh, Valacinaria as an example. So Valacinaria is a plant that's kind of tall and grass looking and uh, it will shoot off runners uh, kind of horizontally. So if you have a plant here and it's kind of growing up, it will shoot like little roots this way, kind of parallel underneath the substrate and more plants will pop up and you'll get kind of this jungle of, of val Valacinaria growing in that aquarium. Now in this situation, it's great because those roots really do sink into the substrate and they can grab hold. So if they're established, most kind of medium diggers or smaller fish that are diggers, they're not gonna dig up those, uh, those, um, those plants that are shooting out those runners because they're just too locked into the substrate. So if, you'd have, if you had a larger fish like an Oscar, yes, they could easily like rip those out but your geophaguses, your shell dwellers, your small lambuna, they're not going to be able to uproot uh, the valcinaria or other types of uh, plants that are shooting runners. Now the trick here is to make sure that those plants are established. So if you are gonna set up, let's say an lambuna tank, which is not always easy with plants and you wanna do valcinaria, I would suggest really making sure that you allow that valcinaria to grow, mature, come in thick, and shoot lots of runners and make sure those runners are in there nice and nice and uh, taut before you add the fish. That way, you know, if you do have a little bit of, you know, pulling or stuff here and there, it's very minimal and those plants are so well established that they're not gonna be bothered. The last one on the list is to use a plant that is very easy because it is a terrestrial plant. Now, maybe you are in a situation where you live in a country where you can't buy the easy planter or you just don't have the means to, you know, do the root runners or the rhizome plants or floating plants or whatever. And you still want to have some type of plants in your aquarium or near your aquarium that's helping with drawing out the nitrates and phosphates and helping to improve your water quality in your aquarium. So that's where you'd wanna use some type of plant that's outside of the aquarium, but is still drawing the nutrients from the, the fish tank. So that could be things like pothos. So you can see, you know, I've got pothos plants um, throughout this fish room. And what will happen is they're growing in a pot or they're just sitting on top of the aquarium, but their roots are going either behind the background or into a filter or just kind of sticking into the water. And they're sucking up the water out of the fish tank with all that fish waste and, and nitrates that's being produced in the fish tank and it's acting as fertilizer and then the plants will take off. So I love using pothos. I've been using pothos for years. It's fast growing, the fish don't need it. The only thing I would caution you is uh, if, you, if you have like cats, um, I've heard that it uh, can be toxic to cats if they eat it. 
So if you have a cat that likes to jump on top of your aquarium and nibble on things, maybe you don't want to use pothos. But you can also use things like mangroves. I mentioned mangroves earlier where I have them in my practice tanks, but there are also freshwater mang uh, mangroves that you can use. You could also use things like Dracaena. Dracaena you find everywhere. Now you might not know it as that name, you'll know it as Lucky Bamboo. But it is actually not bamboo. Bamboo is a very tall, it's actually a grass, but it's a giant, you know, plant looking thing that can grow 30, 40, 50 feet tall. So you're not gonna do real bamboo in your fish tank, but you can do what looks like bamboo, which is Dracaena. And you can find those in grocery stores and pretty much anywhere, right? And you can, all, all you need to do is maybe you have a hang on the back filter or something like that. And you can just take your Dracaena, put them in the back of the hang on, hang on the back filter and they can grow up into, you know, the room and you're still getting all those nutrients being drawn up by the roots of the uh, Dracaena. So, um, you know, things like Dracaena, things like mangroves, things like pothos or other potted plants that can uh, draw water from your fish tank um, can be very useful in helping you to uh, get the same effects of having live aquarium plants without having to deal with all those other issues that we talked about before. If you keep African cichlids and you're wondering what kind of plants can you keep with African cichlids, you had mentioned, you had heard me mention the hornwort before. Check out this video right here. It's all about plants with African cichlids.